Welcome to episode 17 of the Game Caddy Tutorials. I'm Scott Moeller, and in this video, I want to show you how to use Game Caddy version 5.2 to play Angus Lynx. Last time in episode 16, we looked at uh, Birthplace, which is uh, APA's version of uh, St. Andrews, and I showed you how to use Game Caddy 5.2 to play that course. I want to add something uh, that I left out of that video that's um, important. And uh, before we get started with Angus Links, what I'll do is I'm going to call up the game configuration settings menu. And uh, the way that you do that, as you would have seen in the last video, is to pr press Control O uh, or to bring it up from the game configuration settings button over here on the conditions tab. All right, and I'll just go ahead and uh, press the button here to bring it up. And uh, when I showed you how to play Birthplace, uh, what I did was uh, use the modified selection here under the win controls uh, and one of the options that I selected down here was on each shot because when you play birthplace, uh, the rules say that when you have moderate and blustery winds, uh, you're supposed to roll for wind before each shot, essentially each shot that's more than 45 yards out. Uh, and some uh, folks uh, also use that same approach when playing with calm winds. However, if you don't want to use um, that approach, meaning that you don't want to have to roll for wind each time, uh, you have two options. And the one that I showed you in that video was to just check uh, the um, or click on the on each shot checkbox one more time and it will get rid of um, that on each shot feature. However, another way to do it and one that's actually a little bit better when you uh, are playing and you don't want to have to roll for wind on each shot and you don't have a course that has uh, a lot of other uh, special wind features is to just use the standard mode. So for example, if we had been playing birthplace with calm winds where we would have been using these built-in wind charts instead of the whole wind charts that come with the birthplace course, a very quick way uh, to play would be to click on standard wind instead. And you'll see that these options are even grayed out uh, when you do that. And what that does is it will use these boards right here. In essence, because we're gonna be, we would be playing with calm wind, it would use these, uh, this chart in particular and it will automatically uh, roll when you have the standard win selection it will automatically roll the dice each time that wind rolls menu comes up so that's why you don't have to uh, select auto roll when you're using standard mode i just wanted to point that out because when you're playing courses that don't have special wind features uh, associated with them, and that's many of the APA uh, courses, particularly the older co courses, don't. Okay, this is going to be your fastest way to play. However, for Angus Lynx, we do have special wind features, and so we're going to go back and click on modified here. And uh, the special wind features for uh, Angus Lynx, uh, which is APA's version of Carnoustie, uh, don't require us to roll for wind on each shot, but nonetheless, I'm going to select auto roll because that's just a, a faster way to play. And so when the wind rolls menu does come up, the dice will already be rolled for us and we don't have to click on that roll button. All right, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to ignore all these other settings here. If you want to know what these are all about, go to the Game Caddy website and uh, look at uh, the information that uh, has to do with posts about Game Caddy 5.0, and it will explain these features, uh, other features for you. 
All right, I'm going to click on Apply Settings. And I'm now going to come down here to the Angus Lynx course tab where I've already preloaded Angus Lynx in here uh, using the Import Course button. And I want to draw your attention to the summary of what the wind uh, uh, features are for Angus Lynx. And what it tells us here is that we have, if we look at this bullet right here, it says this is a course that has prevailing winds. So before the round, uh, we need to roll a die, and we'll use the game caddy to do that. If we get a one through three, then it's a type A uh, prevailing wind. If we get a four to five, it's a type B. If we roll a six, it's a type C prevailing wind. And I'm going to do that to show you how uh, you do that within the game caddy, and then uh, I'm going to play a hole so you can see how that works. And then it says, and this is what's critical for this particular video, it says, for each hole, change the types uh, except when you have no wind and you have swirling wind uh, to the wind type for that hole. Okay, so that means that when we um, set the prevailing wind and we're actually playing the hole, uh, if we uh, get a, a roll where we have no wind or we get swirling wind, then we're not going to have that prevailing wind. These two take precedent over that. The other thing about Angus Lynx, and this is uh, fairly unique, I, I haven't seen another course that has this feature, although there may be courses that do. Keep in mind, I only have you know less than a third of the courses uh, that APA uh, puts out. But it says if you have calm uh, or moderate winds, that you have to add five yards uh, to whatever that wind effect is. And if you have blustery wind, then you have to add 10 yards to that wind effect. And while that's you know conceptually very easy to understand, when it comes to the mechanics of implementing that, uh, implementing that, it can actually be uh, rather challenging when you get you know things like well you know you're now working the ball against the wind and you've got a crosswind and you know how do you go about figuring out all the math for that. Well, the game caddy does that for you, so you don't you don't have to worry about it. You just need to understand how to use the game caddy in order to be able to accomplish that. Okay, so let's go over to the conditions tab, and um, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to arbitrarily say um, that uh, our day wind is going to be a moderate wind. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is keep the conditions normal. Again, I could roll for all this, but uh, that's not the part that I want to demonstrate uh, to you. Uh, what I want to show you is how you go about uh, establishing a prevailing wind type. So we'll go ahead and roll the dice for that. We got a five, and if, we, uh, if you can recall what the instructions told us, and those instructions, by the way, come directly from the APA um, a course board for Angus Link. So if you know you're, um, you know, not looking at the game caddy, um, you can certainly refer to the course board. Uh, that means that we've got a, a wind type B in here. So I'm just going to put a B in uh, for that. Again, that's only for informational purposes. And uh, we need to do uh, one other thing. Now that we know that we have a moderate wind, I'm going to um, hit the control C combination and that will bring up the wind rolls menu for us. You'll notice that it's selected modified wind for us already and I'm going to now put in those values that were in the instructions when we were on the Angus Lynx course tab. It said you know, except for when we have swirling wind or, excuse me, except for when we have no wind, we have to add five yards to the wind effect. So I'm going to put a five. Notice I'm in the adjust wind magnitude area. Uh, last time when we were talking about birthplace, the uh, extra information from the whole wind charts went in here. Now I'm at the row above that, and I'm going to put in a five for carry, a five for left, a five for right, and I'm going to put in a five for green roll. And this five for green roll, he's saying, well, what, what does green roll have to do with wind? Well, you know, some of the shot results over here, for particularly for moderate and blustery wind, actually do affect 
um, uh, green roll. So that's why this is up in the wind magnitude area. All right, now we don't know what our wind's gonna be yet because we haven't loaded uh, our first hole, so we don't know, you know if we have a prevailing wind, but we'll get to that. What we need to do now is we need to tell the game caddy, all right, so do you want me to add five yards no matter what? Uh, or what, you know, what, do I, what should I do in the case that there's no wind? Well, you can play that whatever way you want, but the way that I prefer to play it is uh, I put a check mark in here. So it only adds these values, okay, when there is wind and the wind, of course, is in the direction that's indicated up here. So if, for example, I didn't want to ever add any extra wind to the left, I could just leave that box blank, all right? But that's not what the course wind, or excuse me, the uh, Angus Lynx uh, uh, course notes tell us to do. So I am gonna go ahead and put the five back in there. The other thing I wanna do is I, wanna, I don't wanna have to keep adding this every single time I load a hole, right? So I'm just gonna put a check mark in the stay on box and that way these values will stay in there till uh, I either change the values or I remove the check mark that's there. And so I'm gonna click continue and we're all set to go at this point. So I'm gonna come over here. Uh, I've already loaded a couple of players uh, in here on the Caddy 1 and Caddy 2 tabs. Uh, I'm gonna come over here to Angus Links. I'm gonna hit the transfer hole button and it's gonna prompt me for what hole I want. I'm gonna put in hole number one and you'll notice that what happens here is that the wind rolls menu now automatically pops up because we're at the start of a hole. It's not going to come up every time we have a shot because we didn't check that uh, option uh, when we were in the configuration settings menu. It's only going to come up at the beginning of a, of a, of a hole. All right. And so we see that the numbers that we put in here before are still here because we click the stay on uh, checkbox. It's done a dice roll for us, which is a 25. Now, a 25 with moderate winds means we're not gonna have any wind uh, at all. And so even though we have a type B prevailing wind, remember that, type B, okay? And we look up here in the whole notes and it says, well, a type B should be a crosswind right. So I'm gonna check this crosswind white right because that's what we would do ordinarily. And if you don't have these uh, you know, numbers memorized, uh, you'd wanna do that anyway because you don't know what the outcome's gonna be. Um, and I'm gonna click continue. And you'll notice, okay, that extra five that we put in didn't show up over here in the wind boxes because um, we checked, um, put a check mark uh, in the box said, if any, and we didn't have any wind, so that additional five yards was not added. Now, before I take a shot, I'm going to do something that you wouldn't ordinarily do while playing, but this is a tutorial, so I want to show you again uh, some different options here. So I'm going to press Control C again. I haven't done anything with any of these players. Press Control C. And that brings back up this wind rolls menu. It's done another dice roll for us. Again, we have no wind because this is a, a, a 13 uh, with a, a moderate um, conditions for the day. But I'm going to change this. I'm, I'm going to put something different in here. And I'm going to put in a number that's larger than 36. So I'll put in a 45. All right. And I'm going to click again, type B wind, crosswind right. Put that in there for our prevailing wind. Now when I click continue, what you'll notice is the ball is now going to go, due to the wind, 10 yards to the right. So how did that happen? Come over here to the conditions tab. We'll look under moderate wind. You'll see the dice rolls of 45. That was caused by me manually entering that number into that dice roll box. We look at a 45. Now, in this case, I happen to pick a number that already um, was uh, going to the right, and we had a prevailing uh, wind going to the right. So it took this number five, and it put it up here in the anemometer, 
and then it applied the adjustment of an additional five yards. If I had selected, let's say, a 51 or 52 uh, for my dice roll number, or that had been the number that had been rolled, it would have converted with a prevailing wind to the right, it would have converted this five in the left column to a five right, and it would have, again, added the additional adjustment of five yards because of the fives that we put in in the wind rolls menu for our special conditions for this course. All right, so I'll go back to Caddy 1, um, call up the all-in-one menu here. We'll take a look at the course. Uh, this Angus Lynx is almost the exact opposite kind of course from Birthplace, where Birthplace has these wide open fairways and uh, it's really easy to avoid major trouble because you can aim 40, 50 yards left and no matter where that shot goes, it's almost certainly gonna end up in the fairway on many holes. That's not true with Angus Lynx. You've got these really narrow fairways and uh, hole number one here is by no means uh, among the most narrow, but we don't wanna clobber this ball uh, with a driver because with uh, the ball going 10 to the right, even if we you know try to aim to the left to compensate for that, uh, we could still get ourselves in uh, trouble using a driver. So instead, there's no guarantee what's gonna happen here, but I'm gonna choose a four wood instead. I am gonna come over here and I'm gonna uh, look at this and say, well, uh, Tom Lehman, who's my golfer, has an average W of 5. Uh, with a 4 wood, that ball's going to carry to about 235. Again, looking at the course, 235. I'm sort of in the middle of the fairway there. It might be a little bit to the right. Um, and so I'm going to aim 15 to the left to compensate for this. So in this left box, I'll put a 15 in. It's going to cost me five yards to aim that far uh, to the left, which is trivial uh, in my view. So we're good to go with that four wood. I'll roll the dice. I got a 53, so he didn't he didn't get all of it. He didn't hit it wildly, but he didn't clobber it. That that uh, is an eight on his card in the W column. So I'll put that in there, and we'll go ahead and take the shot. And you can see that the shot itself went 220, right 10 with a 15 fairway roll. We're not gonna reach the green on that. But when you add in the wind effect and the aiming that occurred, what that translates to is a shot that went 215, right five, um, we're in good shape, we're in the fairway there. And what I'm going to do is then be able to take the full uh, fairway roll, which is 15, and I'll plug that right in there, and we'll update that shot and select fairway. We'll go to our next golfer, which is Mo Norman. I'm going to click Control Q to call him up. You'll notice that the wind rolls menu doesn't come up because um, we're just rolling for the wind for the hole, okay? We're not doing it for each shot. Uh, I could select a three wood uh, for uh, Mo Norman um, because his average W is seven. He doesn't hit the ball uh, terribly far. Again, because the wind's going to blow it 10 to the right, I can select I'll just do the same thing I did before, select 15 left. We got our aim distance adjustment. I'll roll the dice and let's just see what happens. And I, I got another good roll. This time it's a 44 and on his card, that's a six in the W column. So we'll put that in, we'll take the shot. Both of these shots, by the way, um, went to the right. You can see this one carried 240, went 10 to the right. So it's a good thing that we aimed a little bit uh, to the left to compensate for that. And again, the shot carries to 235, right five. We're in great shape. We'll take 20 roll here because we're in the fairway. 
and that takes us to 255 right five and we're um, in really good shape uh, for our second shot okay that was a quick demo of how you use uh, the uh, special uh, wind features the wind magnitude tool uh, to play a course like Angus Lynx I didn't get an example where we had variable wind we had a constant wind but just know that what this tool does when you and I'll call it up here again with control C when you enter numbers into the adjust wind magnitude boxes as I did here it's going to take whatever the result is from the wind chart that you're using and it's going to apply these numbers to it whether it's from the first wind roll or a second wind roll and that takes care of a lot of the math for you and all you need to do is pay attention um, to what the whole notes say in terms of prevailing wind and you're good to go thanks for watching this video i hope you got something out of it um, i'm scott moeller until next time grip it and rip it